But um, <clears throat> just like to say thanks to Kate and LLS for providing the opportunity for me to come and talk, how I'll have that conversation with you around natural capital opportunities and the role of where biodiversity credits uh, fit in that space. I'd also uh, just like to start with acknowledging our country and particularly the uh, Wiradjuri people and um, yeah, really grateful for their custodianship of the lands and waterways that we, we re rely on for our environmental services and um, just pay my respects to elders past and present and any other Aboriginal people who are in the audience today. Uh, so <clears throat> you've... Um, Part of the conversation today is hearing about a range of different natural capital opportunities for landholders. Um, I'm concentrating on the creation and selling of biodiversity credits as part of uh, the Biodiversity Stewardship Agreement Program. And that all, those biodiversity credits uh, form what we call the New South Wales biodiversity market. And really the, uh, the New South Wales biodiversity market uh, is it, it relies on the creation of different types of biodiversity credits. There's a range of different, um, of what those different types of credits represent. Some around uh, plant communities, so the different types of native plants and how they occur in the landscape. Other types of credits are for specific species as well. Uh, <clears throat> the credits get created through the establishment of a biodiversity stewardship agreement, and so that's a uh, um, as Cassie alluded to, it's one of the agreements that sit as part of private land conservation and uh, it's the biodiversity stewardship agreements or, or BSAs, they run with the land so they get registered on title, uh, they are in perpetuity and they have a funding uh, component to them <clears throat> and also a management plan. So I'll get into a little bit of that as we go through the presentation. The credits um, can provide funding for a lot of the farm management activities that you, you're doing anyway. And, um, and they're mostly, the buyers of those credits are mostly proponents of development, so uh, supporting the transition to renewable energy. Uh, a lot of large infrastructure projects as well are seeking different types of credits, as well as uh, housing, uh, residential construction and uh, those types of activities. There's also that opportunity for credits to be sold for other, other purposes, so they're not purely um, credits that support um, or, or providing offsetting. So they can be for businesses investing in sustainability or for conservation charities that uh, promote a, or care for a particular types of species. Uh, New South Wales has got the largest established credit market in, in Australia. Uh, this is a snapshot from our market sales dashboard and, um, and also shows, it provides a source of information around the, the number of, of sales and the types of, of credits that have sold and, and uh, information about the latest price as well as the, uh, I guess what the, that average price is over time. So that information is available online and that the value um, you can see is under the, the current offset scheme and there's a similar dashboard that has uh, the market value for biodiversity credits from the biobanking program. There's a range of different benefits of, of a BSA and uh, you know, there's been a lot of, um, I think, the interest in natural capital is around diversification and you, know, you hear the words resilience, um, you know, and it can provide a, 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 a future proofing to droughts and some of, the, some of those climatic um, ups and downs that we uh, certainly live with quite often in Australia. And, um, and so it's, a, it's, a, it's that alternative um, or, or an alternative income stream that can be will help to future proof, add diversification to a property, but also make the money that you're investing back into the management of that property makes your farm a, a more enriching environment, which can also have those production benefits that we've been uh, hearing about earlier. <clears throat> a key component of a stewardship agreement is the management plan, and that's a key part for landholders to invest in, uh, invest their time into making sure that that management plan is fitting with their aspirations for the property. So a, a stewardship agreement can fit on a, um, in a the, the shape of the stewardship agreement is, can be flexible, so it doesn't have to sit over a whole part of the property. And, and it, you know, in reality, it best suits in those areas where 
they're less productive, they're not looking, agreements aren't looking to be established over those prime productive areas. So it fits into that um, farm configuration, but how you, um, the management actions that you're signing up for, it's really important that as uh, landholders have their uh, input into it. And they're typical actions around weed management, uh, pest control. There can be uh, restoration activities around replanting and, uh, um, and in enhancing habitat for different plants and animals. Also, where possible, uh, fire is a key part of the management plan as well. We, there is opportunities for stock grazing to be part of that um, on a stewardship agreement because it's around looking for improvement in, in conservation or in biodiversity. It's looking at how to configure uh, that grazing regime so that you, you can demonstrate that benefit or that increase in, in biodiversity and, I guess, species richness of, of uh, that grassy understory. The other key, another key component of a stewardship agreement is the total fund deposit. And so that's the amount of money that gets invested into the Biodiversity Stewardship Payments Fund. That's managed by Cassie and her team in the BCT, but it provides for an annual payment uh, to the landholder. That amount of money that you get each year is essentially the budget that you have for implementing uh, those, those annual works. And that's all uh, set out in, in the, as part of the agreement. It's a really key part of, of, um, of the BSA, obviously, because it's, it's, it's money, yeah, the land is, is being um, managed under that uh, conservation um, agreement. And, and it sets out, uh, the, uh, it's making sure that there's enough money to pay for that ongoing land management over time. Of course, it's registered on title. If that agreement sold, uh, the, the TFD or the, those annual payments are transferred to the new lander holder, which can be also attractive for someone who's looking to uh, manage a conservation area, but also have the, the funds to do that. Any additional money that's uh, available from credit sales once the total fund deposit is fully met, uh, that's money that goes straight to the landholder who created and sold those credits. And I won't go into all of the information at the bottom about uh, yeah, different types of credits and prices, but happy to have a chat to anyone uh, through, through the day. Just got a couple of, um, of um, case studies and probably need to shake a leg with the time I've got left, uh, two minutes. So uh, this is a particular site that was established down at Deniloquin, so it's kind of that rain, rangelands um, uh, down on Hay Plain. <coughs> It was a range of different uh, credit types that were created, some for plant communities, some for particular uh, species, both flora, uh, animals and, and plants. And uh, you can see uh, what the management is paying for around feral pest control, um, control of uh, African box thorn, which was quite prevalent on the property, and also areas of where there's replanting and restoration going on. Another site uh, which is more of a grazing property or they're continuing to graze um, on a strategic basis um, up near Hill End. It's a much larger property and it has a total fund deposit of around seven and a half million, which is paying for that ongoing management over time. It does have a fair component of, um, of restoration going on that as well, which is um, driving the higher total fund deposit. Just want to um, finish up on a couple of uh, ways of getting support for the stewardship agreement, and probably the easiest um, document to get more information um, if you're at that early level is through the stewardship application guide. So uh, I presume the slides will be going out, and so if you can't scan it now, you'll be able to access uh, that online. There's also um, yeah, there's lots of different credit types, not all of them are in demand, but we've got a product that you can type in your address, um, your property address, and it will come up with a list of uh, credit types in your region that, uh, that are in demand for, um, for proponents. So it's, um, I guess it, if you're going down the stewardship pathway, you want to be able to sell your credits, and, and this is a, a way of finding out um, if the types of plants on and uh, animals on your property will create credits that are in demand for, um, for trading. We also have a stewardship support program um, and that's open uh, for another couple of weeks. I think it finishes mid-May and as part of the stewardship 
support program. We'll do an initial upfront assessment and it's really looking at validating your property to see if it um, has the potential for in-demand credits and, and it opens up a discussion around whether you want to go further um, into setting up a stewardship agreement and if you do and there's in-demand credits are present then we can help fund the assessment costs which are yeah, obviously a barrier to setting up a BSA. So if you're interested, have a chat or um, again, uh, just uh, Google search the Credit Supply Task Force and you'll find information about the Stewardship Support Program. And thank you. Oh. Thank you, John, and we will have time for questions after. You'll all notice that these are short, sharp presentations of 10 minutes each. It's really valuable for you to see as much as possible and hear from as many people as possible. Please note that the presentations are recorded, so you will be able to have a copy of them after to send them off to members of your family, members of your community. You'll also get a copy of the slides. And, uh